Hey everyone, I wanted to spend some time playing around a little bit with Bazel. So Bazel is a build tool. You can use it to build and test software of any size, quickly and reliably. Bazel was originally created internally in Google and it was called Blaze. They then open sourced it and it's called Bazel and it seems to be starting to get pretty popular now in the industry. I don't have much experience of build tools, so this is going to be quite interesting for me to learn. So Bazel is generally used on very large projects like monorepos in big companies where they keep all of the projects together for various different reasons. Um, it isn't generally used for people's individual projects or personal projects, but I just wanted to play around and see if I can use it to build multiple different languages in the same repository and just see if I can do any cool things there. I also want to play around with the GitHub integration with GitHub Actions and have some CI running and just have some fun really. So as you can see it's used by a bunch of big companies and it can be used to build multiple different languages, it's scalable and it can be extended. So over in the docs here um, they discuss a little bit more of this, they also discuss how to get started but I kind of just want it to be very hands-on and just, um, just start working here. So first of all, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I just have an empty repository here called Multilanguage Bazel Monorepo. You could, first of all, install Bazel using Brew, but the recommended way now actually seems to be to install something called Bazelisk, which is a wrapper around Bazel. Bazelisk can do some nice things such as managing your versions, making it really easy to upgrade and things like that. So the first thing you want to do if you're on Mac is install Bazelisk. You can use your own package manager if you're on Windows or Linux or any, anything else. So I've installed Bazelisk before, so this should be pretty quick. I'm in version 1.11.0 and that's good. So now that we have Bazelisk installed, we're going to create two files. The first one is going to be .bazel version. And this is what's going to be used by Bazelisk to define what version we're using. If I go back on the Bazel site, we can see all the versions here. The current version is 4.2.2, so I'm gonna go with that. So back in my file, in Bazel version, I'm just gonna type 4.2.2 and save. The next file we need is called Workspace. This can just be named Workspace if you want. I'm gonna call it workspace.bazel, which it can also be named. I just like being explicit so that we know that Bazel is the build tool we're using here. And the workspace file just defines that this is a Bazel project, a Bazel repository. And I'm pretty sure there is generally only one workspace file throughout your project. So this is usually at the root directory of your entire project. And it's used to pull things into your project. So once we start using Python, we're gonna to need to pull in some tool chains, we're gonna to need to pull in some rules from Bazel, some different things. But for now, because we're going very simple, this file can just be completely empty, but we still need it. Now that we have that file, we're actually able to run some Bazel commands. So we could run Bazel, Bazel dash dash version. And this is gonna show us that we're on Bazel 4.2.2. Just to show the power of Bazelisk, we could change this file to be 4.2.1. And if we run Bazel version again, it's actually going to be using a different Bazel version for that command. So that's really cool. As you can imagine, whenever Bazel release new versions, this is going to make it very easy to upgrade. So that's Bazelisk. Next we have our workspace. So this is defining this is a Bazel project. So we could do something like Bazel build. And this is the syntax that it uses here. So this is saying that we want to build everything. Um, under here. So the three dots means just build every single target here. We don't actually have any targets yet, so I'm pretty sure this will give us an error. We can see um, that it's skipping it because there was no targets found. To create our first target, we can do touch build.bazel. Again, this file can just be called build, but build.bazel is more explicit, so I like that. And this has basically created our first target now. There's actually no targets in this file yet, but I think this will allow us to actually run a build. So we can see it found a package, which is Bazel's way of saying that this is a project. This Bazel, build.bazel file is a project. 
but there was no targets here. So generally, um, you might have like a folder here called projects. And inside here, this is where you would actually put your build files. So, well, you would have other directories here. You might have one like um, project A. And inside here, you would have all your source of project A. And along with that source, you might have your, your actual build file. So we could create another folder called project B. And we could also have uh, build.bazel file in there. So this is the kind of directory stru structure we'll be going for when we have multiple projects. And project A and B could be using different languages, which um, makes things quite interesting. So now we're just gonna run bazel build again. And this is gonna run everything. And we can see it found two packages, but no targets. So if we wanted to just build project A, we would go bazel build projects, project A, we could say we want to build everything underneath project A. And this should be projects. So then we can see it just found um, no targets again. So that is that. And we could also do something like this. We could say we want to build everything underneath projects. All right, so let's actually create our first target now. So inside project A, I'm going to use a Bazel rule called general. So if I go over here, we should be able to see in the search, there is a rule called general. And general is basically used to generate one or more files using a bash command. So here we're not actually building any specific language. For an example, to get started, we're just going to define a target which uses the general and it will be able to generate files. So it takes a couple of parameters. We can see it takes a name, some sources, an out, and a command. So let's just copy this and bring it into our project A build file. So let's just keep it called foo. We're just gonna create a text file, so foo.txt. And for the command, we're gonna do something a little bit interesting. So we're gonna say command equals and we're gonna enclose this in quotes. And for the command, we're going to actually do a sleep for five seconds. And then we're gonna do echo, hello world. And we are going to send that over to this file like that. And this file is basically defining the output so here we have this outs, which is gonna be foo.txt. So this is gonna say, sleep for five seconds, and then send this hello world over to your foo.txt file. So we can delete this line now, we don't need it. We also don't need any tools for this. So this is saying that we could use a Perl script as a tool, but we don't need that. So let's save this and see what happens. So let's just, first of all, um, build absolutely everything. So again, we're gonna use these um, two forward slashes and the three dots and build. So we can see now we're building project A and the foo target, which is named here and it's successfully built. So it took five seconds to do that because we had the sleep five and then we're sending hello world over here. The interesting thing here is if we run it again without changing anything, it's gonna run very quickly. So Bazel knows that nothing changed here, that this, this target and anything it depends on didn't change. So it actually has in cache that, so it, it doesn't need to, to run anything new. It, it knows it's already done that. If we were to add an extra exclamation here and hit save and run it again, we can see it's actually going to take the five seconds again to build that and to run it. And again, if we build subsequent times, it happens much quicker because that's in the cache. You might wonder where this file actually is, foo.txt. And we can see here in the that these other directories have been generated. And these are some sim links um, to some folders that Bazel generated. So Bazel bin is where the output actually goes. This is where the output of the build is going.
you have this foo.txt. So these files here, these folders would generally be in your git ignore. You wouldn't push these up to source control. This is just some things that Bazel uses um, to build. So this is a really simple example. Um, we're just generating this file using this target. So let's just go over to project B now and let's create another target. And we'll just say this is bar and we can send it over to a file called bar.txt and let's just say hello globe. And this time let's just sleep for three to make it a little bit different. And we can go over to project A again and we can change this. Let's say that it is hello world with three exclamation marks. I just want to show you something here that we can do basal build. So it's actually running both of the targets together. So it didn't um, need to finish one and then go to the second one. It actually ran them both at the same time. So it's um, this is nice. It's going to speed up your builds. It was able to, to run them together, which is nice. This can sometimes slow down your machine. If Imagine if you had like a hundred different targets and it wanted to build them at once. You can specify um, a limit of how much it builds at once, but we'll go into that a little later. So this is just some of the basics of Bazel. We've created two different projects, which aren't really projects, but they just have one target each, one which creates a bar file, one that creates a foo file. And we've been able to see that um, things are kind of cached and that makes it very quick. So we said that these three dots builds everything. We can also do something like project A and we want to build everything underneath project A. And we need projects first. And that's gonna build everything under project A. You can see that it actually found just this one target called projects project A foo. And that's the name of our target here. We could also just run that. We could do basil run and just point to that single target. I'm sorry, I said basil run, but this um, this target isn't able to be run. You can have some targets that we're gonna see in the future. If you had like a Python application, you would actually be able to run that target instead of building it. Um, but for now, the general doesn't support running. So we're going to use build and we can see we can we can do that. I think you can also actually ignore um, and not use these two forward slashes. So you could actually say projects, um, project A, and we could say everything under that. The nice thing about not using the forward slashes is that we get auto complete. So we can, or sorry, tab complete. So we're actually here in our folder structure, structure and we can see that we can auto complete. So that's the basics of getting started with Bazel. I think in the next video we might start off with a Python application and show how we can actually um, do that. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.